Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy and today we are going to look on to the basic issues in macroeconomics. Let's get started for the discussion. So, we need to understand that when it comes to macroeconomics, it is something that deals with the aggregates. So, here what we do is we will be looking on to the economy as a whole. So we would have to deal with certain topics under macroeconomics where we study the aggregates. It deals with certain fundamental issues of the economy. So macroeconomics would be studying the functioning of the economy by looking on to certain aggregates like uh, national income, GDP and so on. So with this introduction, let me take you to the basic issues that we have in macroeconomics and this would be again covering the subject matter of macroeconomics or this would be covering the basic elements that we would be studying or the basic topics that we would be studying in macroeconomics. The first aspect that we have here is called economic growth. So when it comes to macroeconomics, macroeconomics would be trying to understand the determinants of long-term economic growth. So coming to the factors of economic growth or the factors influencing economic growth, this has been identified to be one of the important element of study for economists. So economists would be studying the various factors uh, that would be influencing again economic growth. The economic growth is one particular element that we have in the macroeconomics. And this economic growth is again influenced by various other aspects like the productivity, technology, human capital, institutional frameworks, and so on. So all these would be covered under macroeconomics. Secondly, what we have here is called business cycle. So business cycle means here we are looking on to the changes. So this changes will show the fluctuations of aggregate economic activity that would be occurring over time. So when we have a scenario of movement of GDP, so it will be moving like this, we can have various uh, types of behavior for the movement of GDP. So this would be something called the boom period, the topmost point, boom period. The bottommost point would be the depression. Then from boom to depression. So from boom to depression means uh, it's a kind of movement uh, in between what you have is called this phase is called as the recessionary phase you have as recession and after reaching depression you will try to go for certain policies and programs so as to make the economy to recover so this is a phase called recovery the topmost called boom bottom most called uh, the depression and in between boom to depression i mean the moment from boom to depression, in this phase you have recession and from depression you will be having recovery and then you will be reaching the growth phase to have what is called the next boom after some point of time. So the economy would be having uh, expansions as well as contractions. So here it is very, very important for the government to take some policies to stabilize the economy so to attain what is called a sustainable kind of growth and development. So all these aspects of business cycles are being covered by macroeconomics, which is yet another aspect to be taken into consideration as far as the issues in macroeconomics is concerned. Now, the next important aspect that we have under macroeconomics is called inflation. So what does it mean by inflation? So this shows the sustained rise in prices. The prices of a commodity, it's not what we are considering here. Instead, we consider 
द जेनरल प्राइस लेवल जेनरल प्राइस लेवल इन द इकोनॉमी सो वॉट आर द कॉजेस ऑफ इंफ्लेशन वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंफ्लेशन वॉट आर द इफेक्ट ऑफ इंफ्लेशन ऑन परचेसिंग पावर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एक्सेट्रा दीज आर बींग स्टडीड इंड मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स अलॉन्ग विद दिस वी लुक ऑन टू द पॉलिसीज दैट आर रिक्वायर टू बी टेकन टू कंट्रोल इंफ्लेशन इन द इकोनॉमी टू हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड स्टेबिलिटी इन प्राइस so to attain higher level of economic growth with stability so which is at another aspect to be considered under macro economics so which is at another issue that we have under macro economics now something related to inflation that is unemployment so uh, what happens here is that there is a very famous theory called phillips curve analysis uh, which explains the inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation so which is at another aspect that we have under macro economics so what does it mean by unemployment unemployment means you are ready to work you are searching for work but there is no job you do not have employment so what are the causes of uh, unemployment you can have various various causes for unemployment so you you identify unemployment uh, by considering the causes or you categorize unemployment by identifying the causes sometimes the unemployment would be frictional sometimes it would be seasonal sometimes it would be disguised unemployment sometimes it would be some other types of unemployment or like voluntary unemployment so whatever it may be uh, about the type of unemployment it would be having some impact or you call it as the consequences so these are being being considered under macroeconomics uh, again we require some policies to reduce unemployment uh, the government would be taking certain measures to deal with unemployment rates so this is at another topic that we have under macroeconomics this is at another issue that we have under macroeconomics now fiscal policy everywhere we consider fiscal policy in most of the problems we go for fiscal policy so here we mean policies of government mostly the central government so government plays a very very important role in the economy of present day it has to spend in order to increase the welfare of the public so it will be spending in the form of development related expenditure it will be having welfare expenditure so it's to have a expenditure in the form of pension spending in the form of uh, subsidies etc apart from this the government goes for revenue collection methods like taxation and non taxation kind of methods the government would be dealing with its budgetary deficit again that will be influencing the aggregate demand of the economy which would further in influence the growth as well as development of economy with stabilization so management of revenue and expenditure revenue and expenditure of the government is very very important this is very very important to attain stability this is very very important to attain macro economic objectives and so on that is at another topic that we have under macro economics then the other side that is monetary policy here we consider the policies of the central bank so the central bank would be taking variety of policy measures or tools of instrument so as to manage the money supply in the economy so it would be actually regulating the interest rate it will be regulating the credit uh, scenario of the economy etc in order to attain price stability in order to ensure that we are having uh, inflation under control so this is to ensure that we are having some sustainable economic growth by managing our inflationary scenario of the economy so this would be again influencing the overall economic activity and it will be impacting the financial markets employment sector everywhere which is at another aspect that we have under macroeconomics now international trade and finance 
macro economic studies international trade as well as finance because when it comes to macroeconomics, it will be uh, looking on to the issues related to trade. It will be looking on to the issues related to exchange rate, uh, balance of payments, uh, and so on. So whenever we go for trade, we should have something called policies taken by the government. So whenever a government try to enter into a kind of trade agreement with a, uh, with, a with its trade partner, definitely uh, some policies are being taken, some guidelines would be set, some kind of uh, barriers, attempts would be set. So this capital flows should be uh, actually considered here. There would be both inflows as well as outflows, both should be regulated. And coming to exchange rate regime, this should be something that has to be taken into consideration since we are dealing with a globalized world of international trade where we deal with the uh, currencies of some other nation uh, so as to have the exchange rate regime in our country uh, in, in the world a setting. So when we consider exchange rate, then our nation's currency's valuation in terms of another nation's currency's valuation is being taken. So this again would be affecting our domestic economy as well as global economic stability. So all these aspects are again uh, forming uh, matters under macroeconomics. So we could find that uh, it's very, very important to understand as well as to address uh, some important issues or problems uh, that we have under macroeconomics because this would be assisting the policymakers, businessmen, individuals, etc., to make something called informed decision. So information plays a very, very important uh, role here. Information uh, is identified to be a costly commodity in several settings. So uh, in order to navigate the complexities, in order to mitigate the risk, mitigate risk uh, uh, that we have in modern economy, it's very, very important to understand and address uh, such kind of issues that we have in macroeconomics. So that is all for today. Thank you. You can like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. You can join our free Telegram community. I'll be providing the link of the same in the description box. Also, you can download the Learn Economy app if you're preparing for any of the competitive examinations in economics. You will be getting the previous year question papers, weekly tests, as well as some study materials if you download the Learn Economy app and choose the required options there. So that is all for today. Thank you again for watching.